So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater. A magic dress. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do this. Uh, uh, we're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here on By the By. This is Mrs. Atom. And this is Mr. Atom. And we are here at Sexpo Melbourne. It is Sunday, the final day of Sexpo. We've had plenty of time to walk around and check things out. And we want to go back through and talk to some of our favorite vendors and let you listen in and see what what was here. Yeah, so uh, stick with us. Uh, We should have some uh, good conversations here in the next few minutes. All right, so the first company that we're going to talk to is a very, very sexy company. It is Bear Bros Co. They make uh, candles and uh, coffee scrubs and a really awesomely sexy calendar. And so we're going to hear from them next. Is there anything you'd like to say before we play that? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we uh, we actually purchase. We don't again. We when we come to these things, we're not just here to, to look and and, and lust. Um, we also purchase. So we <laughs> we put our money where our mouths are. So we got uh, one of their candles, the lumberjack mandel, which I absolutely love. Um, we got a, um, a a body scrub that's a coffee, grapefruit, and some other fruit. I don't remember what it was. Gr- no, that's already said grapefruit. I don't know. Um, the body scrub, which I'm really excited to use. All we know is it smelled awesome. It smelled awesome. And the guy goes, look, man, I just put it on my face and my ass. And, oi, his ass. Uh, if, if my ass can look like that just from putting a scrub on it, <laughs> sign me up. I know. I'll be scrubbing myself daily. Um, yeah, and then we got one of their calendars because uh, you said you were going to put it up at work. Oh, absolutely. That way, if I have a bad day at work, I can just look up and put a smile on my face. There will never be a bad day at work looking at that calendar. Yeah, these guys were great. Yeah, and not only was it a, a good product and, and wonderful smells, but they're just you'll hear in a little bit, but they, they do good work as well. Passionate guys uh, with a passionate product. Yes. Yeah, so definitely uh, enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Bear Bros Co. Yes. And these guys um, definitely stand out on the floor because um, they are standing, well, they're, they're always wandering around their booths wearing nothing but long aprons. And they have this really good habit of turning around and facing you know, away from all the folks on the floor. Um, so let's tell, tell. And, and besides that, they're very beautiful specimens of humanity. We all, we all hate them a little bit. <laughs> but tell us a bit about what you guys do. Okay, so um, when we started, uh, it was basically from the premise that I love candles and my business partner here, Ryan, loves being naked. So we wanted to combine those things and uh, add in the charity flavor as well. So we make candles, coffee scrubs, we have a calendar, and 10% of everything goes to charities, which we rotate every three months. That's awesome. That's awesome. That, we, we did peruse through the calendar, and they are, uh, I think uh, Angela says we're going to go home with one. Um, so <laughs> coffee scrub, is that something that I use in the morning? Yeah, use in the morning, use at night. Uh, so it's a completely vegan product, which is perfect for, for this day and age. Um, pretty much just brown sugar, salt, um, some essential oils, some coffee, and some almond oil. So everything that's perfect for what your skin needs. Um, yeah, you rub it on in the morning, you rub it on at night, either or, and you come out fresh as a baby's bum or fresh as a bear bro's bum. He's being very modest here. He's made actually a really good product. He sent some over to me. I was in China at the time, and I received it, and I was surprised, which insulted him that I was surprised that he made a good product. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been composting my grounds all this time. I'm doing the wrong thing with it. I know. Apparently, to send it to them. Yeah, exactly. So you you give what what percentage of your profits to charities? Yeah, so it's ten percent. Uh, so so far, well, this weekend we've uh, been able to tick over ten thousand dollars since we started. Which um, yeah, we didn't think that would happen so soon. Which is good. It's been a year and a half. So it's it's kind of yeah, a bit of a shock. And some charities we worked with, um, like Happy Kids Cambodia, which is a, a school over in Cambodia, started by a couple here in uh, Fitzroy. Um, and yeah, we were able to spend a few weeks over there 
teaching them how to make candles. We were obviously clothes for that. Um, but then, <laughs> but then uh, you know, what we donated to them, uh, even though it was sort of a small amount, it was enough to keep the school running for six to 12 months. Uh, we were able to make tables and everything for them so they could study on. Um, and that was really life-changing for us because... You know, we're here in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, we have a very, very blessed life. We get everything we want, um, and to hang out with kids over there that, you know, have to, was it three hours to get to school, three hours to get back um, through some of the dirtiest slums in the world, um, we came back pretty humbled. Um, it was a pretty emotional experience, and it only pushed us further as far as all the charity aspect about how much we can actually do. So that was awesome for us. They got yeah, these guys. I mean, attractive, intelligent, <laughs> compassionate. <Stop it. laughs> like, I kind of, I kind of feel like um, I hate them a little bit. <laughs> hate them and love them. Hate them but love them. Um, so the the candles, the candles. You guys have tons of of smells. We, I think, we have fallen in love with a number of them, um, including the the lumberjack, which you have labeled as a mandel, which. I mean, <laughs> love that as well. Um, yes, Candle, what's, what are some of your biggest sellers? Um... Well, this weekend, the Yes Candle has gone absolutely nuts. Obviously, with uh, everything that's happened over the last few months, and um, we have a lot of friends in, in that community, and, um, you know, all this bullshit, if I can, I can call it like that, that everything's been going on, and um, we're, Chris and I are right on the right on the front line, defending it, so to speak. Um, so we wanted to show our support, and that's why we released the Yes Candles. It's 100,000 cent, like fairy bread birthday cake. So as soon as you pull that lid off, it brings a smile to your face. And that's what we wanted. We wanted happiness. Um, love is love. We're all for it. And um, that's gone nuts this weekend. That's been our top seller. Um, so that's been really cool. And then uh, for me, it's uh, vanilla caramel or coconut lime. The vanilla, vanilla caramel is like a like a dessert so it just gives you like a big hug of scent it's very strong and then the coconut lime's like your fresh summery vibe so I'm a bit of a candle nerd I'll have three or four at a time lit of the same scent so you walk in the house or down the street from where we live and it's uh <laughs> it's out of control that's fantastic um so where can folks listening to the podcast here find your candles and and your scrubs and your calendars and you guys you know specifically yeah, so we've got a website, www.bearbrosco.com, and then forward slash Bear Bros Co at Facebook, and then at Bear Bros Co, so it's all sort of uniform. You'll find us if you search us. Um, and then you can hire us for hen's nights, bucks parties, birthdays, 60th Jewish women's birthdays we've done, baby showers with clothes on. We've, uh, we only started this in December, and the idea of that came along. We did a 50th birthday party, uh, and we were wearing some chinos, we were wearing some pants, and uh, I looked at Chris, and I said, I have a really crazy idea. And he said, what's that? And I said, hen's parties. And Chris goes, what, naked? And I was like, hell yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and it just rolled from there. We sort of put the feelers out, and um, since January this year, we've pretty much done about 29 hen's events or birthday birthdays even a baby shower uh, which was very interesting um, yeah. and still got six more for the year so that's going to be about 35 36 and our target's about 70 next year I don't see why we couldn't book out every weekend and uh, they've been a great hit and it's something it's like sometimes the hand or the girls don't want that extra stripper and doesn't want to go all the way um, it can make them feel a bit uncomfortable so we sort of just tame it back a little bit it's still very classy we teach the girls how to make candles. They get to walk away with a candle. Uh, and we're naked in the aprons at the same time. So there's a cheeky look there. And again, like you said, maybe not me, but Chris is a bit of a specimen to look at. So yeah. <laughs> Please, please. <laughs> I mean, compared to me, you guys are a man and a half, you know, both in muscle, height, and sex appeal. I would agree. <laughs> yeah. That, th <laughs> thanks, doll. <laughs> I love your butt. I mean, come on. <laughs> You love my butt. Aw. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. Good luck out there. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I, I would highly recommend people smelling your stuff. Okay. So next up, another group that we talked to. And this is a, a group that when we walked around the first time, we saw them. They weren't selling anything, really. Uh, it was an inf information kind of thing. It was a, a booth that was trying to, to drive information for support of their cause. Um, and these folks are Salome's Circle. So um, foolishly, I forgot to ask her how she could be contacted during the, the, the interview. But it is uh, www.salome'scircle.org. 
let's spell that out because that might be hard for some people. It's S A L O M E S C I R C L E dot org. Yeah, and so what they do, and 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 she'll tell us more about that in the interview. But uh, just to get a brief overview, it's a peer support group for. Uh, strippers, exotic dancers, and showgirls, people who may not identify as, as sex workers, um, but still need to have people who can help them, you know, doctors and, and, and lawyers and, and accountants and whatnot, financial planners. And this group is really awesome. They lovely to talk to, and they do really, really good work. Yeah, it was really interesting talking to them because, uh, like like Bradford said, you know, whenever we walked by the first time, we saw them, but didn't even stop and talk to them because we we're like, okay, it's informational. And the first time through, we were just kind of scoping things out. But then we were like, well, what kind of information are they are they giving us? Because it. It seems like, you know, if you're there, you're there for a reason, right? Um, but then we stopped to talk to them, and they were just really lovely people, great cause, and, and trying to catch people and help people that are a bit on the fringe of, of both societies. And, and it, I kind of equate it a bit to the bisexuality, because you're, you're a bit on the fringe for us, you know, between the heterosexuals and the homosexuals, but for them, they're a bit on the fringe between the, the normal vanilla people and those who are sex workers. Um, so it, it's a really great support group, and I, I know they're new, and I know they're just starting up and trying to build that base. Um, but I think it's really great that, that somebody is, is taking that upon themselves to do that and try and help these people. Yes, because it's a good work. I mean, you know, it's, it's difficult work, it's good work, and it's, I think it's easy for us to marginalize these uh, communities, and we shouldn't do that. That's, that's not what, what we should do. And besides getting the, the support in a lot of different areas, like like you said, between the the GPs and, and accountants and whatever is needed, it's also good to have that peer to peer communication and know that you've got someone you can talk to and a support group if something happens or if you just really need a little bit of help. Exactly, a you're not alone sort of society, and that's that's why we liked it. So here's our discussion with Salome Circle, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Welcome back, folks. We're here with Sophie from Salome Circle. Uh, when we walked around Sexpo, this was one of the booths that really jumped out at us because we thought it was a great idea because it's a great purpose and a great cause. Do you want to tell our listeners a little bit about what you do, where the idea came from? Yeah, sure. So it kind of started with a group of strippers um, chatting in the change room about kind of social isolation and not having information on all the different clubs, um, on stripper-friendly referrals. And also, it, it also came about because sex worker organizations traditionally did not recognize strippers as sex workers. So we thought that we would create our own space. So the space is for sexually explicit entertainers, so that includes strippers, but it includes peep show girls, um, topless barmaids, topless waitresses, and uh, those that do camming. Uh, it's, we've kind of maintained it as a open to all genders, in this industry, in this part of the industry, so that's kind of how it's developed. We meet once a month in the CBD, um, and then the rest of it is really on a secret closed group online. Um, so yeah, we're at 170 members now, and it's just contained within the state of Victoria. Excellent, so is there any, uh, any plans of expanding to the other states in Australia? Yeah, possibly. I think we're, we're trying to develop this, um, we're trying to develop it locally first so that we can really grow our resources and, and kind of get some better direction as to where we're going and what we want to do. Um, I think that the, the purpose of our organization is kind of developing organically. It's by the input of all the members. So we want to make sure that it's quite solid first in the state of Victoria. After that, we'd look at expanding it outwards. And how long have you been doing this? Uh, so this started, the conversation started back in September of last year, um, but October was when we started really kind of formulating a bit of a plan of action on how to actually develop it, and by December we had a website, so yeah. Awesome. So basically what, one of the issues is like, uh, is it doctors and, and things like that treating, or is it more, I don't know, like accountants and stuff like that helping the, the performers? Yeah, so we've had issues with finding stripper-friendly GPs, psychologists, accountants, um, those in financial planning. Um, that, that's that's kind of the bulk of it, uh, but it goes beyond that as well. Other services, like it, you've, most girls, most people within the industry have felt 
uh, reluctant to disclose kind of what they do for work because of how they might be treated. Um, so yeah, that's definitely part of it. So we have sourced quite a few people already within different services um, and met with them and discussed who we are and have developed a bit of a referral list already in those areas. <laughs> that's a great idea. I, it kills me that anybody would judge anyone for what kind of work they do unless they're an American president. Then they should be judged harshly. <laughs> but I mean, come on, that, it makes no sense at all. Um, so how has Sexpo been for you guys? It's, it's been very exciting. I mean, it's been difficult. <laughs> we had quite a few volunteers, but a lot of people kind of dropped off last minute. So there's been a good core of about five or six of us that have kind of done the whole thing. Um, so it's been exhausting, but it's been a great experience of getting the word out about who we are, uh, networking with other groups in here, um, and just handing out information about who we are so that we can actually you know, possibly recruit more members or just let the general public know that there is a space like this for those in this industry. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so very much for your time. You guys had some awesome buttons that we saw yesterday. <laughs> uh, we're going to, we're gonna, w w my favorite one, which we'll definitely post a picture of, is cunt. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's been the most popular one so far. So we actually had to make extra cunt badges. I love Australia. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, yeah, good luck to, to you in this project. I think it's a great, great idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So next up is uh, Juju Jezebel. We went and talked to them because they were recommended to us by Trinity Leather. Now that uh, they're going out of business. Sad face. Yes, but she said that, you know, while we're down in Melbourne and at Sexpo, they were going to have a booth there. So we went by to, to talk to them, and they had some just really amazing leather goods, beautiful colors, well-made, uh, intricate designs. I, I really feel like that's the one thing that I'm sad I didn't get was one of their paddles. Um, their paddles were so pretty, and they're so well-designed and, and well-made. I, I, I have sadness and fear of missing out from, from not getting a paddle. We, we might still be able to get a paddle for you, babe. I know, I know. We'll have to get it from the online store. <laughs> At some point, we're like, oh, God, there's so much. I'm spending so much money. Um, yeah, it's it's so easy to spend money at Sexpo. Yes, but then at least you have fun things to show for it. That's so true. And this is one that I'm really kind of sad that we didn't get. They had some beautiful beautiful handmade pieces. Um, I would highly, highly recommend uh, anybody who's into the kink scene, uh, into leather goods, or into just some stuff that looks pretty and works well to check them out. Yeah, absolutely. So here they are. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back now with uh, Juju Jezebel. Yes, this is, uh, this is one of the, the booths that always catches my eye when you walk by because it's extremely high quality, beautifully done leather works. We're talking harnesses, gears, and whatnot. So can you tell us a little bit more than what my just poor rambling just did about what you guys do and where the idea came from? Uh, basically, the idea came, I guess, from our, our own personal life. Uh, my wife, Tanya, and I, who's here with me today, we don't really do black in our personal lives at all. We never wear it. And... Once we started getting into the leather side of fetish world, we realized there wasn't really much out there. So we started making it ourselves, basically. And so now we do all sorts of colors from shiny metallic gold and silver to some darker oxblood colors and a few little browns and tans and pinks. And we've got a purple crocodile skin, I call it over there. And um, yeah, it's just about a bit of fun as well. A lot of the kink world is quite sort of dark and gloomy and we're a little bit more about the fun side of things. So that's what we're trying to get in the products that we make. One of the things I have to really compliment you on is the details. There's, I'm, I'm looking at a paddle here that is absolutely amazing because it, the handle of the paddle actually looks like a lady's legs crossed. Yeah, the stitching and some of the detail work, the texturing is just absolutely gorgeous. It's stunning. Yeah, thank you. That paddle is actually one of our signature pieces, actually. We call it the lady paddle because, as these guys said, it looks like a lady and it's got a little heart shape cut out of it. And as I say to people, if you get it just right, you get the heart imprint left on the skin. And if you don't, you get to try again. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. That's, I love it. I love it. So how has Sexpo been for you guys? It's been really good, actually. We um, have been living in the UK for the last 15 years, moved back to Australia a year ago. So this is the second market we're doing in Australia. So it's been a massive learning curve for us in terms of the Australian market. It's been successful for us sales-wise. We've had a real blast and we've done some awesome networking. We've met a lot of people in and out of the kink scene and in and out of the adult industry. And it's just been really fantastic from that sense. 
except that my feet feel like they're literally on fire at the moment. <laughs> that means you're doing something right then. That means you're doing something right. Excellent. So for people who want to find your product online, where, where can they go? At the moment, we don't have an online shop because of our big move. Um, but we're all over social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're on FetLife. For those of you who know about FetLife, if you look for Juju Jezebel, J-U-J-U-J-E-Z-E-B-E-L, done. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. We'll also put a link on our page for you guys. Um, yeah, we're, we're for, your, for your social media whatnots. Um, yeah, and uh, good luck and uh, keep us smacking. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, now here we are with our, I'm not going to say favorite booth, but they're a booth. They're our favorite booth. <laughs> They're a booth that we constantly visit. Love them to death. They're just amazing people. It's it's such a great product and great company. Just amazing people. Um, but we are at After Dark Intimate Wipes. And this time, instead of talking to Alexis, who you have heard before at the uh, Brisbane Sex Boat podcast, we are talking to Belinda. Uh, she's one of the other business partners. And she's going to tell us uh, a little bit about the more interesting side of the business. But it just... Again, we cannot express it enough how awesome these wipes are and how important they are. Please, please, please do not do some of the things that Belinda's going to tell you about and things that people have done. Just get the After Dark Intimate Wipes. Use them. You will be clean and fresh and tasty, whether it is pre or post-sex, or even just we use them when, when going out, going to work. Anytime you need to freshen up, they are just awesome. So, yeah, here's After Dark. Hello, we are back now with Belinda from After Dark Intimate Wipes. As you all know, we love this product, but we're going to uh, mix it up and bring you a slightly different message this time. Yes, so we, we saw somebody last night. He was a, a, a relatively tall gentleman, and, and one of the things that he said, which, you know, what he does when he's done with his sex was, I just wipe my dick on the carpet, which I immediately... <laughs> I mean, I realized what he was trying to say was he was hung like a horse, but immediately I thought, but why are you laying on your belly on the carpet? So tell us, what, what do people often use and what have people told you they use? Okay, look, we've heard it all. It's some hilarious, some funny, uh, some not so funny. Okay, people tend to use, and this time around we've had a few people saying um, people are actually using curtains. They use baby wipes. They use uh, all sorts of shirts, socks, sheets, towels, um, even bodily hair. That was an interesting one, like beards or, uh, yeah, we've had some funny, interesting ones. So, uh, wow, I'm thinking uh, so there's something about Mary. <laughs> exactly, out for a beard instead of on your head. Yes, exactly right. I'm also thinking about this curtain thing. If that's their curtains at home, A, how often do they clean them? And B, if it's not their curtains at home, they're in a hotel, what is on those curtains? Yes, and they'd be, you know, I think it's so much effort to take them off, clean them, <laughs> wash them, or they, you know, there's like a big dry stuck patch on the side of the curtain. Very, very interesting. But we had multiple people saying curtains, so that was probably the most weirdest one we've heard yet to date, I think. Multiple, multiple people. Multiple people, yes. Uh, I would say at least 10 couples. Um, especially in Melbourne and in Brisbane, we were very shocked. But look, I think our product will uh, assist those guys and make their life a lot, whole lot easier. Holy geez. Okay. Okay. So once again, for those folks that haven't heard uh, our, us, us talk you guys up as we do, um, tell us a little bit about the product and, and why it's uh, as amazing as it is. Okay. So... After dark intimate wipes can be used for a lot of reasons. So basically you can use them for before to freshen up, after to clean up. You can also use them because they're antibacterial, so you can use them as a toy cleaner as well. Um, and just general personal hygiene. Um, it's kind of one of those products you don't realize you need it in your life until you use it and then go, what did I used to use? So we're all nodding our heads here saying yes, because um, a lot of people, we've had some return customers, especially here in Melbourne, saying, oh my God, I've tried them, give me some more now. So it's just one of those products that are so handy and convenient, but everyone needs it in their lives. And you know, we're all busy and running around and let's be honest, two showers before and after every single time. I know uh, if you're doing that, I think you're either not doing it right um, or, you know, your water bill must be too high, but personally, it just gives you that showered feel um, and then you can go to sleep. So there you go. I know that for us, I mean, we've used them at the show here multiple times, not for those reasons. 
or was it? But, you know, just I'm, I'm wearing leather pants when we're doing our presentation. And let me tell you, leather don't breathe. So I'm wiping myself after I get out of, the leather, out of those leather pants. And it's, I always feel fresh and clean and happy. And that's, and that's exactly the purpose behind them. So they they can be used, of course, for intimate reasons, but also just in your general life. So, Like leather pants. And so you also have the hemp seed oil, and we have just given that a try. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so we can officially now say as of November 2017 that you can actually consume this. Um, so, yeah, we're very excited because before this, so we sell it as a massage oil, but it's so much more than that. Um, it was funny, Mitch used one of the lines to our customers before because we weren't legally allowed to say that you can consume it until now. Um, but he used to say, if you want to massage your lettuce with it, feel free to. And we thought that was the best line to use. But look, it's an, it's an amazing, beautiful product. You can use it for multiple reasons. So I use it on my son who's got eczema. Really good for sensitive skin, dermatitis, uh, anti-aging, moisturising. Um, I put a teaspoon in my shakes. It's full of omega-3, 6, and 9, full of antioxidants, 100% natural and pure. I also had a customer tell me that they use it as a lubricant, which we've never tried, but I will definitely be trying it. They said it's a natural lubricant base. feels amazing and, and, and lasts a long time. So yet again, another product that is, you know, that is amazing and so good for you. That's awesome. You just gave me a few more ideas on how we might use it. That's awesome. I know. Delicious. I love it. I'm so excited. Well, as always, thank you so much. Again, we love the product. We love the people. You guys, everybody at the booth is always so sweet to us and so friendly, and everybody loves you. And where can people find you? They can find us, and we love you too. Thank you very much. <laughs> they can, you can find us on www.afterdarkintimate.com. We ship Australia-wide, and we'd love to hear from you. Excellent. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. See you next time. Love you guys. Okay, so next up we talked to uh, a gentleman who was, I was really excited by this product because it was a product that we've seen similar ones um, at, at stores like Max Black uh, and definitely online, but this company is called Mia Max um, and they did... And that's Mia, M-I-A-M-A-X-X, -X. it's not just M-A-X. Good point, yes. And, and like Mamma Mia. Yeah. Or, or Mamma Mia the Musical. Thank you, Abba. Um, but yeah, Mia Max. Uh, and it was a, it's a, it's a <laughs> for lack of a better term, a fucking sex toy. So it's, you know, we've all seen those, those boxes that, uh, that, that fuck you and that have a dildo attached to them. Like the fucking machines that take up, you know, like a couches with type of thing to set up and they're big and loud and noisy and... Uh, well, this company has managed to innovate and design a handheld, portable, small fucking dildo vibrator. Um, and we, uh, I saw it on the first day and thought to myself, at some point, we're going to talk to these folks. Uh, and then on the last day, we had a, a moment to, to get by and chat with them. After chatting with them for just a few minutes, it was instantly uh, apparent that they... It wasn't just for ladies. No, and that was one of the first things that they said to us when we walked up is they, they looked at Bradford and they said, you know, do you like anal play? And it was very clear, and, and from the beginning, it was it is both for men and women. And I think it was great to, to see that and for them to acknowledge that. And it was all throughout our conversation with them, it, they were very fluid in the back and forth. So it could tell that it wasn't just, oh, we're going to say this because you're here. But that is the intention of the product. Yeah, we were excited by that. So, of course, we, we ended up with one of their toys, uh, five attachments, and then something that I can make it we. I say I because I'm so excited by this. It's, I, I'm already claiming it as my toy. Uh, but it allows uh, us to uh, mount it to a wall or the floor or the headboard. I'm so excited by this toy. And come on, you can't come to Sexpo and not walk away with a sex toy. So please enjoy this conversation with Bruno, uh, the, the man behind the myth, the man behind the sex toy. So here it is. Okay, welcome back, folks. I'm really, really, really excited about this next one. <laughs> um, this is a toy style that I have, I have been looking at and looking for for a very long time. And we're here with Bruno at, from Mia Max, and he is the creator. Yes, I am the creator of this awesome fucking toy. And I don't mean that like it's a fucking toy. I mean, it's a toy that fucks. Um, it's one of those, I don't know, how do you describe it? Well, it's a personal handheld fucking machine. 
I love it. It's just great. So we've all seen those big boxes that are impossible to hide, and there's no way to discreetly have them in your house. Um, and many of the ones that we've seen are very loud as well. But this is like a, a dildo that extends and accordions and vibrates. Um, yes. Correct. Um, the, the biggest part that we did over the five years was try to minimize the actual length and quieten the toy. Um, it's been a journey, and finally we have achieved that. So where did the idea come from? Um, well, I'm a hairdresser, um, and I do dreads. And with dreads, there's a manipulation by hand to palm, which acts like a pumping action. After doing um, eight hours a day of it, I thought I needed a machine. And the only thing that I could get close to was a sewing machine. Um, I then made my own handheld machine to do dreadlocks. And one day, one of my clients came in with long dreads and my hand dropped to my groin because I was just doing that action. Um, and then I realized I don't want to be doing dreadlock machines. I want to be able to do this as a handheld machine for sexual pleasure. And my journey began from there. That is so awesome. I never would have thought that's where it started from. Yeah. That's my favorite origin story that we've heard. <laughs> so I, I then, obviously my background is minimalistic in engineering. I then went to Sexyland or a sex shop to find a toy that did this. And I thought I could just change the heads and put needles in there and off I would go. And to my amazement, all the toys only went about a centimeter, maybe two but they had no force, no drive. Until the client from, uh, the, the lady behind the counter says, sweetheart, if you can make this longer and stronger, we can sell a lot for you. And that's where the journey became. And it is awesome because that was one of the things that we noticed is you guys have it set up. Um, you've got a, a wall mount set up, which sploosh right there. Um, and it's, it's, it's literally fucking a, 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 a doggy style silicone butt. Exactly, a silicone butt. We actually purchased that in Germany. When I saw it, I said, perfect for demonstrating. Um, it does what people can visualize because we are very lacking in visualization here. So... Um, we've had so many people want to buy the butt rather than the toy. So guess what? We're going to be importing the butt as well now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. So the one thing that I was really concerned about was because it does have that fucking action, how the motor would stand up over time and, and how strong it was. But then after we played with it and you feel the, the torque on it, like it's pretty strong. Like it's kind of amazing. Um, we've tested it basically with um, 30 minutes anal penetration. That's a, you're a trooper if you're doing that. Yeah, and, and 40 to 60 minutes vaginal. So I think after that one needs medical attention. So, um, and it has a cutoff switch too. So if it is forced too far into the vaginal area, it will stop and get you to back off and then restart again. So there are some safety features there that we've incorporated just in case. That's awesome. So what's the full stroke on it? Uh, a full three inches. Brown chicken, brown cow. <laughs> I love it. Um, and so you guys are Melbourne based, yes? Yes, yes Melbourne based. And it's made in Australia? Designed and created in Australia and unfortunately uh, made in China. No worries. We it's, it's designed and created is amazing. Um, we we're so excited to. I mean, like I just want to go home now and play with it. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, hashtag fortunately, I'm here by myself for the next three days. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get a workout. <laughs> so are you a uh, an in, you know, the inventor designer? Are you also a user? Yes. Yes. I I have to try to see what it feels like and understand how long it goes um, in the sense of time-wise and all that other paraphernalia behind it. And so it's got interchangeable heads as well, which was something else that I really liked. Um, what's your favorite uh, attachment? First of all, let's start out with what are the different heads and then tell us what your favorite is. Okay, we, we have a penis-shaped head, which is the most popular of shapes purely because people like to see that. We have a dolphin shape, which I thought would be a gender neutral shape because a lot of 
uh, women didn't want a penis to penetrate them. Uh, we then created a straight, uh, smaller diameter for the Asian community and also for beginners of um, anal penetration. And then we've got the wave, which acts like bead sensation when it's pulled out and in from either the vaginal area or the anus area. My favorite is the wave, because it really gives you a pull through um, jerking effect, which is wonderful. So excited. And it also vibrates. I, I f forgot to mention that, but it's also a vibrator. Um, I think seven different... Yeah. Seven of the most um, important vibes that most manufacturers use. Um, the intense part is that the motor is at the tip of the, 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 the toy rather than at the handle. So it is quite invigorating. Exciting. Very exciting. <laughs> Excellent. So where, where can people find, you, find this wonderful toy and find you guys? Um, we are online, www.miamax.com.au, but we also sold in um, most sexy land stores, Club X stores, and all over Australia at the moment. Fantastic. We'll also put a link up on our website. And uh, we were, we've were we been very excited. As, like I said, I, I saw you guys the first day. Like, we've got to talk to them. And uh, we're going home with one. We definitely had to buy one. So thank you again. And thank you for your time. All right. So this next booth is one that we were so excited by. Uh, it's a company called Dominant Furniture. And they make kinky sex furniture that you can have in your house. And they they had a St. Andrew's cross, uh, a horse and a bench. They had the stock set up. Um, but basically, they can customize and make whatever you want, any kind of wood, any color. Um, it, in fact, we were talking to him about a custom bed after we did the recording with him. And he just very quickly drew it up. And he's like, well, this is what I would suggest. This is what I would do, blah, blah, blah. So absolutely willing to work with whatever you want to make to fit in your lifestyle and your space. Definitely. Scott was an amazing guy to talk to. Um, and and to t again, to touch on that, when, when we recently purchased a bed for our apartment, um, we, <laughs> we looked online for, for kinky furniture, um, and there was none in Australia, and we were very much sad face on that. But, you know, you found some in the UK, and they would ship, but they were fucking expensive, but then shipping was as much as the bed itself. Um, but so Scott is based out of, out of Melbourne and he was talking to people and a, as you'll hear, he's talking about shipping globally. There were people from all over the world here at Sexpo in Melbourne. Um, and, and it was really exciting to talk to him. And when we, he goes, Oh yeah, uh, I, I, I've designed a bed. And I'm like, Oh cool. And then we talked to him about it and he was like, yeah. I, and one of the questions that I had, because this is a, a, something that we've talked about, is we want to get a sex swing, but we're in an apartment, and we can't drill into the ceiling, and I didn't want one that hooked onto the door, and I didn't want one that um, had to have a big stand, but he said, absolutely, I can build something that would... Um, that, that could come off of the bed itself. And we're really excited by that. So s enjoy this conversation and, and definitely look at their website and see the kind of products that they build and check them out. So we're definitely, I can say without question, going to purchase something from him in the not too distant future. I'm really stoked by that. So any of our play partners, uh, stay tuned. Yeah, We'll have a swing in our bedroom before too awful long. Okay, we are here with Scott <laughs> from Dominant Furniture. I, I, I laugh because I'm terrible with names. Anybody who knows me knows I'm terrible with names, and I keep calling him all sorts of other things. Um, but he has, this booth is one of my favorite booths that we've seen. Um, when, when we were looking for a bed, uh, we looked everywhere for a bed that could also be a play area. And so the only places we could find anything like that was shipping from the UK. So you've got quite a number of pieces of furniture items here. Where did the idea come from? And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and yeah, your product. Okay, so I'm an engineer by trade. Uh, and last year my wife and I came to Sexpo and we're looking around and saw some of the products and thought, well, I can build that and I know that I can build it and make it strong and build a quality product. So that's where the idea came from. That's fantastic. And how's the response been? Yeah, heaps of inquiries, lots of inquiries from interstate. We've had a few international inquiries as well. 
Uh, and we, our product range is all customised, so if someone wants a specific piece, we can custom build for them. So you've got this... Oh, here you go. I would say, just looking around here, it's pretty amazing. There's, uh, there's a stock, there's a, a St. Andrew's cross, there's a horse, there's a coffee table that you can even connect things to, and it looks pretty freaking sturdy, and I feel like we need one of these in our living room. <laughs> Indeed. So the coffee table, it just looks like an ordinary coffee table. It just has anchor points that's, that are welded in. Your parents would never know if they saw it in the lounge room what it was actually used for. Our parents might know. They <laughs> I think our parents think we're dirty fucks anyway. So, How much weight does it hold? I'd, look, we haven't load tested it, but I'd be very comfortable putting four to 500 kilos on it. Amazing. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. The So I think my favorite piece has got to be the, the horse with the attachable, detachable side bench. Um, is this something that you use at home yourself? or No, it was just another idea that we came up with to have a kneeling attachment that went with a horse. And since the last couple of days, we've had inquiries to build it out of steel so it can be almost... Uh, collapsible furniture that can be tucked away uh, and can be flat packed to Queensland or wherever it needs to go. Or Sydney to our house. And what I really like about it is the ostrich skin covering on it. It's just has this really nice feel and it, it just yeah looks like a good quality piece. So all the steel, all the wood, it's all uh, comes from Australia. The upholstery is all locally done so it's all made here in Melbourne. And it's, it, it's extremely high quality. It tells, I mean, it, it shows that what you do, you love. Or it, it may not be, you may not play with it, but you definitely put your heart and soul into these pieces. And it definitely shows. Thanks. I, uh, I actually enjoy just working out in the shed and creating things. So, as I said, if someone's got a special piece that they'd like, let's draw it up and see what we can do. Fantastic. And how would they get a hold of you? Uh, they can contact us through our website uh, at Dominant Furniture or on Facebook. Awesome. Thank you so very much. Uh, we're going to be in contact with you because I, I think that that needs to be a birthday present for someone. Uh -huh. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. No worries. Just before we go, you mentioned earlier about a bed, and I've actually just finished making a queen-size bed frame that has uh, anchor points above the bed frame as well as a headstock at the foot end of the bed. And if someone wanted a cage, we can build that underneath. Oh my God, yes. So uh, as a side note, one of the things I loved about one of the beds I saw was there was a queening position where the lady could sit on it, which would be right at face height. That's Anything's an option. I, that right there is the perfect answer. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so those were all the booths that we actually had some time to sit down and talk with. Um, but of course, there were a number of other booths. I, I'm not exactly sure the total number of booths, but it felt like at least a hundred. It was a bunch of booths. Um, but I have a very vivid memory of us turning a corner and looking at something and then you turning around and seeing a specific booth and doing the cutest little jump. And I think you did a little kick in the air and you were so excited by who is at this booth. So do you want to talk about whose booth it was? Yes, and I actually even started pointing at it because somebody was with us, and I was like, oh, that's the brand, that's the brand. Uh, but it was the Catanzaro brand, and it was it's actually the dress that I wore during our Sex Ed in the City talks at, at Sexpo, because um, we did, I guess we should touch on that, but we did a couple of, uh, every day we did a talk for Sex Ed in the City in the share room that was sponsored by Red Hot Pie. Um, but we did a, a talk on Swinging 101 and the Art of Flirting, and... Um, but it, during the classes, though, I wore this dress that I bought when I was in Amsterdam. And it was a French company. It's Catanzaro. And I hope I'm saying that right. If not, I apologize. You are not French. You do not say it right. No, no, I don't. I can guarantee that. Um, but it's just, I really loved, I got two of their dresses when I was there because they're, it's just such a, great product. They're very well made, interesting fabrics, good designs. It's different than anything else I had seen in Australia, which is why I bought them when I was there. And then I, I turned the corner at, at Sexpo and there was this booth full of their stuff. And I was just absolutely so excited. And what we learned in talking to them is that I think they're fairly new to Australia. They're trying to kind of get into some of the stores and things. Um, there isn't anybody in Sydney, which is why I had never seen them there. Uh, there is a store in Melbourne 
Melbourne, Twisted Toys, I think, that carries them. Um, and we went there today, and they had some just absolute gorgeous pieces. I could spend a fortune there just getting clothes that I can't wear to work, but I can wear for fun times. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was so excited when I saw them. And it's really good to know that, that some of those interesting things are, are moving in. And we can get some kind of fun, sexy clothes that are a little different and, and not quite the normal, just little sexy black dress or strappy something, you know, has a little more variety to it. Yeah, so if you've seen our Twitter feed, it's we've got some pictures of Angela in this dress, and it's absolutely stunning. And it's um, one of the things I love is it's got uh, ass cleavage, uh, and it's it's so fucking hot. Um, and yeah, we uh, we we discussed with the folks at the booth about trying to get it into Sydney, and and uh, really the the place that really fits in, I think, better than anywhere else in Sydney would be Max Black. Um, so if you're a Max Black patron, tell them that you want to see this brand. And I'm not even going to try to say the brand again, but what is it? Cat and Zara. I think it is, I should probably look this up, but I think it's C-A-T-A-N-Z-A-R-O. It's Patrice Catanzaro. If you look it up on Twitter, it's at P. Catanzaro. That's all I know. Uh, that, which is uh, already better. I mean, to, for Angela to know the brand of anything is pretty impressive. So that means that it must be fucking awesome. Yeah, we all know I'm not the girl in this relationship. Exactly. And, and it's, yeah, so um, we, of course... Uh, peruse their stuff. Um, I had intended on getting some underwear and didn't. Uh, I just remembered that uh, I, I didn't do that. So we might have to you know, order some stuff online. Um, but you did get a two-piece, a new uh, top and, and skirt from them. Uh, and they're pretty fucking sexy. We'll definitely post pictures when uh, the next time you wear it. So one of the you know other things that we saw, of course, while we were there, um, there's the Traditional, there's the beds, the massaging uh, adjustable beds. Um, I still don't understand why paintball is there, uh, but there was at least two, maybe three paintball booths there. Um, yeah, and every time they asked me and they were like, oh, hey, come over, are you interested in paintball? I'm like, no, 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 I like my balls unpainted. I, that's not how I want them. Yes, we do not like blue balls. No, it doesn't. And, and I mean, come on, painted balls don't taste good. Indeed, that's actually very correct. If you have painted balls and they taste nasty, you need to be using the After Dark Intimate Wipes. I just love it. <laughs> Even when it's not a commercial, it still is a commercial. Um, <laughs> they, they, they do not sponsor this podcast yet. We're talking to you, Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, another thing that I was really kind of surprised at the number of we saw were the Yoni egg people or the Yoni... I'm going to say rocks, but they're these, they're these they're these polished eggs that that ladies stick uh, in their vaginas and make, and it's for like building pelvic floor muscles. Yeah, building the the Kegel muscles. Yeah, that to me is still magic and confusing because I don't understand what a Kegel is. Well, you like it when it's used on you. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> um, perhaps we should do a podcast in the future about that because uh, it's still it's still a mystery. A mystery item to me. Yeah, and there were also the other, the typical booths of like lingerie, the corsets, uh, sex toys. There was the J, the J.O. Lou booth where they had their ice cream machine again. Go back to our Brisbane podcast. Um, but yeah, they had the ice cream machine with the edible lubes on it. And yeah, it was just some of the, the normal things that you see, but there's still kind of fun. It's really funny. Now we're talking about it. I remember I wanted to go back and get the Christmas. They had four special flavors for Christmas. I need to I need to now go to uh, Max Black or Risque in Sydney and, and see if we can get those because their four Christmas flavors were cotton candy, gingerbread, cinnamon, and I think it's like hundreds and thousands or sprinkles or something like that. I don't remember what the fourth one was, but there were holiday... F oh, candy cane. That was... It had to be candy cane. It had to be candy cane. Um, it, yeah, so they had these uh, these holiday flavors. So, yeah, really excited uh, to, to go and get those. Um, another booth that we spoke to, but we didn't actually have time to podcast because the, the day was running thin, unfortunately, was Our Kink. Um, and we follow them on Twitter. They follow us. They're a lovely, lovely company. Um, very young. Have uh, I think he said they started in June of this year. Um, and what they do is is education. And it's uh, they're a Melbourne based, um, and they it, they provide this community for 
kinksters to to get together and 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 communicate and be educated. And it's such a great great um, company, great organization. So yeah, they they also run a podcast. So if you are tired of listening to our podcast, add their podcast to your to your lineup. It's uh, good stuff. But please don't forget us. Please don't forget us, but just add to. Um, but yeah, we need to we need to talk to them in the not too distant future and do a, a, a podcasting crossover because they were a, such a lovely group. They they were doing these really great presentations on wax play um, and and some impact play stuff. And everybody that we talked to every time we passed by were just all smiles and all happy and very friendly, lovely people. Yeah, and it was all done in a very positive way. So it was good to see that. And they were, like I said, they were very nice people. And they're just kind of all about bringing that community together. Yeah, which uh, we all know. Anything that we can do to bring our community together is a positive, positive thing. All right. So do we want to get into some of the pros and cons of uh, Sexpo? Mel- sure. Uh, let's start with the cons. What what were you disappointed in? Uh, so the one thing that I was disappointed in, well, there were two things I would say. Let's start with number one. Uh, number one is the fact that, and, and we had pretty good turnout at our, our talks in the share room, but I would say the share talks, a lot of people, and we suffered from the same thing both in Brisbane and here, is there are talks that you see on the list. Initially, when you walk in, you're given the little booklet handout for Sexpo, and it has a list of the talks in the share room. And there's some that you're like, okay, I want to go see this. I want to listen to this one. But, I mean, you're walking around there. You're just sensory overload. You're inundated with everything. You, you lose track of time. And so it might be, say, there's a talk on at 2 o'clock I want to go see, and then you completely, next thing you look down, it's 2.30, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, who knows. Um, I think it would be really good if they could just briefly announce on the main stage or over the PA system, you know, either every hour this talk is coming on in the share room, if you're interested, whatever, just something about it, even just the name, the title of it, I think would be good. And just a brief announcement, or even every couple of hours, these are the ones coming up. Um, I did notice on the big screen around the main stage, when there wasn't a performance on the main stage, the side screens had, I'm going to say advertisements, but it was, you know, share room sponsored by Red Hot Pie. Something else would come up, but there was never an agenda posted. So even something like that, I think, would help. There's an agenda posted outside of the room, but again, you lose track of time. And having that audio reminder coming over the PA system would be good. Um, like I said, we had great turnout, I think, at our, our classes, so I'm very happy with that. But there were some things that I kind of wanted to see. And, it, and again, you lose track of time, and, and you kind of just get wandering around and talking to people or, or you know, shopping or whatever. Um, so I think kind of pushing that a little bit more would be a good thing. Yeah, no, I would agree with that completely because it's the exact same thing. There was a few talks that I really wanted to see, and then just the you know, next thing you know, the, the time's gone away, and it's like, oh, shit. Uh, you know, and and we're part of the, you know, we're presenters, so you would think that we would be better at that, and we're not. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I don't think I should have to put a reminder in my phone to go see a talk. Uh, I would like to be reminded of it before it actually happens. Yeah, and I, I think just even, you know, like I said, even having the, the timetable listed on the big screen, although you can't really see that from all over the place, um, but even just a, a you know, 20, 30 second, hey, this is what's coming up in the share room, blah, 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 here's the title, whatever kind of thing would be good. Um, but that, that's really, again, not a major thing. One of my negatives was I was missing the cosplay. But one of the things I loved about Brisbane was the cosplay aspect. And, you know, it, it, we often forget about how important the visual is. You, we assume that, well, if, if it's going to be sexy, it needs to be naked. And that's not the case. Sometimes, um, you, you know, you want to undress or you want someone to play that kind of fantasy role. Um, and it was kind of a bummer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her out. Lucy B. wasn't at this one. But I don't, I, you know... I, I totally respect why, um, and I'm assuming it was because there wasn't a cosplay aspect to the sexpo. It was clearly, there was a, a clear void in, in that. And I think that's a good point, is that a lot of people think that you have to be naked to be sexy, but that's not the case. And there, the fantasy is a very, very big part of of all of this and, and being sexy and having that intimate relationship with your partner is, is the fantasy of things. Um, and, and cosplay definitely fills that role. And there was not 
any real cosplay representation much at all. There was a retro room where they had bean bags and some TV set up, little tiny TV set up playing porn and whatever. But yeah, there wasn't really that cosplay aspect. Um, shall we get in? Well, I was just going just gonna to add to that was that the, the retro room sort of felt like the one thing it was really missing was Lucy B. Um, that was, we, we, look, the long and short of it is we missed you, Lucy. We really, really missed you. Um, yeah, but it, it, was, it was good. But it, you know, I, I missed the, the cosplay aspect. It's nice to see people wandering around in their costumes and you're like, wow, that's fucking sexy. And I sort of missed that. And I would agree. So two points there is is the retro room did feel like what Lucy B's area typically is, except there was no Lucy and people dressed up. Um, And also, the other thing is that typically at Sexpo, particularly later at night, and I would say later on Saturday nights, you tend to get people wandering around that are a bit more kind of dressed up, and they they do have a bit of more of that cosplay, the kink kind of look to them. Uh, We saw a little bit of that, but it wasn't as much of that, I think, here as what we had seen before. And maybe that's because that was missing. Maybe it's something else about the environment or the the clientele. I don't know. We did see a lovely couple with their puppy, uh, and they were walking him around, um, and he was very well behaved. Um, And when I say puppy, I mean in the kink community, puppy, not an actual canine. Um, but he, it was really nice to see them wandering around. And, you know, as they sat and shopped, he sat and just sat. It was really cute. I liked that. Yeah, I thought that was really good to see. And, and it was also interesting because uh, as we were walking down one of the aisles, when I first spotted the couple with their puppy, beyond them was a paintball booth. And the guy at the paintball booth was kind of looking at the puppy who was sitting on the floor very well behaved while they shopped and talked to the vendors. Um, But he was kind of looking at the puppy with this little bit confused look on his face. His head was kind of tilted. And then he kind of looked up and caught me watching him. And he kind of looked away real quick like he'd been caught doing something bad. (laughs) Which I don't think so. But I think he was just trying to figure it out and understand like what the situation was. but I thought it was really great because that was the first time I'd really seen anything like that at the expo, and that was on day four. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, I agree. It was something that was missing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, should we get on to some of the pros? Okay. Um, so one of the big positives I feel like is the layout felt very good. I know it's a similar layout to to many of the expos, at least the Brisbane one. Um, but I felt like the booths were a good distance apart to where when it was busy, it felt busy, but if it was slow, it didn't feel like you're miles away from somebody else. Yeah, I would completely agree with that. And I don't know how many vendors were actually at this uh, Sexpo, but it felt like there was a large number of vendors, more than what we had at Brisbane or uh, previous ones at Sydney. Um, yeah, I thought that was was really good. One of the other things I, I will say about this one is I felt like, and again, I don't know if it's because of the, the vendors or if it's the direction Sexpo's going or or just what the different location may be, I don't know. Um, but I felt like it was maybe not quite as vanilla. Um, I felt like while you still have the the easy intros and aspects, and we had some friends that, that met us here, and they are extremely vanilla. Like, this was so far out of their realm. Um, but they came to support us and to see us talk one day. And thank you, but they, they were very much out of their element. Um, and, you know, we're walking around with them and like, oh, here's this and here's this. And, and, and they were asking so many questions. So there's still very much that, like, if you're just kind of curious about anything, that was definitely here. So I, there was definitely, you know, still a bit of that kind of, of basic just have fun and, and entry, I'm going to say entry level sex stuff. Um, but at the same time, there was a bit of that extra edge. If you're a, a little bit experienced, if you're more into the kink or the swinger scene, anything like that, just a little more adventurous in, in your sex life, there was there was that extra bit there, I felt like. And it was easier to find. Uh, maybe it was more visible. Maybe that was the difference. I would tend to agree. Anytime that you can surprise us with stuff that we hadn't seen before, I think that's a, a, a great a, a great start. And, you know, you, again, like you said, there was enough stuff for the vanilla crowd, and then you had the different stuff. Again, um, uh, Mia Max is one that was surprising to us and was we were both excited about. So uh, it, it's nice to have that kind of new, different uh aspect to kink uh, to the kink scene and, and to the sex scene at sexpo yeah so that's um that's basically our experience at sexpo this year i will say one final thought we had 
an amazing time here. We've been wandering around Sexpo for three full days now, just absolutely inundated with everything, talking to people, people watching. Everybody seemed to be having a great time. There were a lot of people that were engaged, and I saw a lot of people talking to the vendors at the booths, and that was the, that's the one thing I would say. If you've, I mean, if you're listening to our podcast, you've probably been before, but if you haven't, don't be afraid to engage with the vendors because they know their product better than anything. So if you have questions, you want to know anything about it, how do I use it, what is it, what what is it that you're here for? Absolutely talk to them. They're standing around bored if you don't talk to them. So just, yeah, don't be afraid. And But I think we had, it was such an amazing time. It was a good weekend, a lot of uh, exhausting days, but fun-filled. And yeah, a lot of great conversations. And we learned a few things. Absolutely. And we're really looking forward to uh, next year. Apparently, uh, it's going to be back in Sydney at the new uh, convention center in Sydney. So we're pretty fucking stoked about that. Um, yeah, so... If you have any questions, comments, or, or rude remarks about Sexpo, let us know. Um, you can find us on Twitter at By the By Podcast. Uh, Facebook is www.facebook.com slash at By the By or slash By the By Podcast. Um, or email us at theatomsoflove at gmail.com. And our website is www.bythebye.com.au. And yeah, so we really appreciate you listening to us and uh, giving us a little bit of your, of your time. Yeah, thank you very much.